Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I'm going to use Word 2010 here, actually. Same procedure in 2007, and in fact, even earlier versions. But I want to use Word to create a shift in page orientation. So I have a multi-page document, of course, and a portrait layout. But I would like one of the pages to be a landscape orientation so that I can insert an Excel chart on it, and it'll display larger and whatnot. I also want to add some uh, page numbers and make sure they're positioned in the right spot. So this is the plan of action for today. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new document so we have something new to work with. And so that we have multi, you know, a whole bunch of pages with some text, I'm going to use a RAND function here in Word. So I'll type in uh, equals RAND parentheses about 20, comma uh, 6, closing parentheses. If you've never used the RAND function in Word before, you probably never really have a major need for it. But it'll insert some random text, some uh, some text for us. And basically what this means is I'm going to have 20 paragraphs of six sentences each when I press my Enter key. There we go. And in fact, it took me over onto a blank fifth page. So I'll just backspace back. So now I have four pages of a whole bunch of text that Microsoft has kindly put in for me. Now I'm going to zoom out a bit so that we can kind of visualize what's going on here. And as you can see, I simply have a four-page document filled with text. Zoom back in. I'll go to one of my pages somewhere in the middle here. How about page uh, two? And I'm going to click right at the top of page two. This is at the beginning of a paragraph. I kind of got lucky there. If you're going to split um, a document so that one of the pages is landscape with a big chart, you want to try to avoid splitting in the middle of a paragraph if possible. Because um, it just obviously it, it hurts the readability. But I got kind of lucky here in that one paragraph ended at the page one, and then my second paragraph and another paragraph start at the beginning of page two. So my insertion point is at the beginning of page two, and this is ultimately going to be the page that I want to be landscape. And it's a really simple trick here, but I'm going to head over to my page layout ribbon, and I'm going to go to the breaks. And I'm going to do a section break next page. If you haven't worked with section breaks, um, they're really useful, especially when you want to make changes within a document. For instance, this is how some documents they'll have Roman numeral page numbers for the introduction part at the beginning of a book, and they'll have Arabic numerals for the bulk of the, for the remainder part of the book because they have different sections. It's also in books you notice up in the header where they have the title of the chapter in the header section. Well, each chapter is a section and you can have different headers for each section. So I'm going to do a section break next page. Now there's not an obvious change. I clicked it and this part where you have to kind of trust in the system. And I'll show you what it's doing in just a second. But I just inserted a section break next page. But because I was already on an another page you didn't notice anything. I'm going to do a second one though, okay? So breaks, section break, next page. So I've done two of these. This is my second one. There we go. So I've done two section break next pages okay now just so you can see what is happening I'm gonna turn on my formatting marks zoom in a bit more here and so you can see the first time I did a section break next page it put a section break next page actually at the end of my previous document so I was at the at a new page and I just did another one so my insertion point is still here it's at the beginning of page two which is now blank and this page, this page two, which is blank, is a section. It's a pretty short, short section, but a section nevertheless. All right, now that part's pretty easy. Let me zoom out and you really see this happen. Okay, so my insertion point is on beginning of page two, which is in a section by itself. I'll go to page layout, orientation, landscape, and now that page is landscape, where all the other pages are still in their portrait orientation. So that part was pretty easy. Okay. Next order of business is to get that chart embedded in there. So I'm going to jump over to Excel and let me just uh, go to a blank sheet here. I'm going to create a brand new chart in Excel pretty quickly. North, south, east, and west. Let's get some years up here. How about 2006? We'll do a little control and autofill to get all the way over to 2010. And I'm going to put in some random data. I'll do a ran between function, 200 to 900. And then since I selected multiple cells first, I can do Control Enter to populate that. So now I have some data. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my data, insert, and I'll do an area chart. And I'm going to do a stacked area chart. 
there we go and now I have a stacked area chart let me zoom out so you can kind of see what that looks like okay so there I've got my uh, my demo chart I'm going to copy this chart jump back over to Word my insertion point you see that my insertion point is still in this blank page which is landscape we go to my home ribbon click the lower portion of the paste button I want to do paste special it's a Microsoft Excel chart object and I'm going to do the paste link option now by doing the paste link option that means that my Excel data is going to be linked over to my display on Word so if I were to change my Excel data my chart on Word will change also now if you don't think you're gonna need that then you would just do a regular paste and in fact you could even paste your chart as a picture um, that gives you some different options to work with it but I'll just do paste link Microsoft Excel chart object and there's my chart I'll go ahead and take a minute to uh, oops got a little carried away there go ahead and size it a little bit better let me zoom out so I can kinda of see what's going on okay so now I've got my chart taking up a nice area and let's go ahead and just just so you can see how this link works I'll jump back over to Excel for a moment and, and just so we can kind of notice something I see that my green portion which is my East store it's pretty small in 2006 so let me jump over here 2006 East it's currently 219 I'll make it 900 that changes how my chart looks and if I go back to Word my chart matches up so now the green portion East is much better so that's pasting a chart as a link okay now I want to get some page numbers inserted into my document in appropriate spots and let me kind of point out uh, one issue I might have so let me zoom in for a bit and I'll double click into the uh, actually let's do a footer here so I'll double click in the footer area and notice that I already have a custom tab stop over at the right align mark I have a right align tab stop over at the six and a half inch mark on my portrait page and if I tab over there no big deal I can do a insert a page space and on my design ribbon for header and footer tools page number current position plane number yeah no big deal I got my page number there but if I close out I'll see that on my landscape page my page number is over at the six and a half and six and a half inch mark on a landscape page and that's the wrong spot it needs to be at the nine so the portrait pages everything is good but the landscape page it's not good in order to fix that on my landscape page I'd have to go in here I'd have to uh, actually make sure I'm looking at that particular page there we go I'd have to break my link to previous button right here on the ruler and then I can adjust there we go and if I press my alt key I can kinda of see things a little bit better there we go takes care of that and of course then I'd have to go and I'd have to fix my other pages so if I look at the footer of my next portrait page my tab is off into space there and to fix that I'd have to go into my uh, like my home ribbon and my paragraph dialog box my tabs dialog box I'd have to take the ruler that's a little bit off it's close to the nine inch mark I'd have to get rid of that clear it put a new tab at the 6.5 okay and um, do a right align tab click OK that puts it there but I still have to make sure that I'm breaking the link to previous and that's one way I can start to remedy and I see oh my page 2 is a little bit off again so let me go ahead and fix this one there we go close and so now I'm back in business page 1 is in the right spot page 2 is in the right spot page 3 page 4 and page 5 a little bit tedious to hit those options and that's the way you'd have to do it is certainly in older versions of Word and clearly it works in uh, Word 2010 but let me go ahead and undo a whole bunch of that stuff there we go and then I can do a control Y I'm a little bit too far okay so now I'm pre page numbers completely um, I'm just gonna double click on the footer area of my first page and this time instead of going to tight you know tabbing over and things like that I'm gonna head over to my footer drop down and I'm gonna choose their blank three columns option and then over here on the far right I can type in page space and then I'll just do a uh, 
page number. There we go. Close out of there. And there I've got my page one on my first portrait page, page two on my second page, which is landscape, and everything else is in the right position. Because when you choose that three column layout for, uh, for the footers, or for the headers for that matter, it puts in kind of like magic tabs that will follow and always be at the right edge of the page no matter how narrow or wide it happens to be. So a much more efficient system. When we're all done, zoom out for a bit, close header and footer, and here we go. We've got our multi-page document, landscape page in the middle of it, footers over in the right spot, or headers if you're going that particular route. Thanks a lot.